I know it's late, two in the morning, so I know most people won't tune in for the live, but y'all watch the playback. But yeah, you already know how it is, man. Mark the messenger. Don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, the channel. This one's gonna be about, you know, be prepared to leave your friends and family, man. Especially as a chosen one. When you're chosen, you're in a higher calling. So there's gonna be demons using people to try to, you know, put you back to what God has delivered you from. Spiritual warfare. Always keep that in mind. What's up? What's up, Sandra? What's up, Isaiah? Shalom to you too, bro. What's up, Aaron? What's up, Max Canna? What's up, bro? What's up, Julian? What's up, Tez? What's up, Trina? What's up, Linda? What's up? Peace and blessings to you too. And I have a lot of people telling me about. There might be a lot of airplanes too, so don't don't mind that. But I have a lot of people telling me that, you know, whenever they give up a sin. Uh, you know, a vice, a bad habit that they wonder why that, you know, certain people are, you know, pushing them more to do whatever, you know, God is delivering them from. Because best believe when you're giving up a bad habit uh, or a sin, okay, that is God delivering you from something. You know, a lot of people, they seek deliverance from going to a pastor, going to a church. And I'm not against that. I'm not saying that there's not men on this earth today who have powers, who have power to cast out demons. I, I believe in that type of stuff. But, you know, the most important thing is how is your relationship with the Most High? How is your relationship with Christ? Because, you know, self-deliverance is real. And a lot of people don't even know when they're getting delivered they're in that supernatural process. They don't even understand, they don't even know. Even when I was going through, I didn't even know. I just knew that these sins that, that were keeping me spiritually dead and I had, to be, I had to break free. And I know the only way I could have break free was through my obedience. That was the only way. So remember, obedience is power and it is key. It's the number one key, guys, when it comes to spiritual warfare. And, you know, yes, you could pray. I'm not against, you know, that's also key to pray. Maybe doing some fasting too. That's also key to as well. Okay. And you got to understand when you have a high calling in your life, what these demons are going to try to do, they're going to try to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal your blessings. Steal your joy. Okay. Even some of these demons, they might try to kill you. Y'all know the story, Cain and Abel. I know y'all know that story. Okay. And destroy you, destroy you to get you back in darkness. Because best believe, guys, when you're abiding in the light, when you're walking with Christ, you're filled with the Spirit. Okay, these demons, they could see. Oh, yeah. They, they see who's, who's, who's the ones who are chosen, those who are anointed. It's just like in that movie, They Live, which I recommend y'all all watch that movie. It came out in the 80s, I think like 88, 89. And it was pretty much a movie where uh, uh, the main character, I won't ruin it for you guys, but I'll just give you guys like a small summary. Uh, he put on the glasses on. And he started seeing all the zombies, all the spiritually dead. And he was one of the few who could actually see. It's a, and that, that movie was exactly how the world we live in today. A lot of people who are out here just, you know, and you can't even see it. But we're living amongst the dead. The walking dead. We're living amongst that. Okay, with the zombie movies, you know, they show you how, the, 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 you know, people look like zombied out and stuff like that. And that's how they look spiritually. Some of these people, that's how they look spiritually. If only we had the eyes to see, you know, how people really look like in the spirit. Man, a lot of y'all guys, especially a lot of y'all, y'all want to be so quick to have, you know, intercourse with certain individuals. If you could see the demons on them, you want to find them attractive, man. But some people who are, they're so driven by their flesh, they're actually attracted to the demons. Okay, they're actually attracted to the succubus or the incubus because they're plagued with the spirit of lust. Okay, and as I was saying, when you're chosen, it now comes with much is given, much is required because now God has given you the insight. He's giving you the knowledge. He's giving you the wisdom. And you got to understand that through your knowledge, you're being preserved because the Bible says my people are perish, or my people perish for lack of knowledge. So all these people around here who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they're all perishing for the lack of knowledge. And there's going to be something in these people that bothers, that bothers them. And it's the Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit in you, that is bothering their demons. They're going to scoff. They're going to troll. You know, they're going to do all these type of things, falsely accuse you. You know, they're going to do all these type of things, but always keep this in mind that spirits are using people to keep you down. Spirits are using people to drain your energy, to steal, your, steal kill, and destroy. So always keep that in mind, man. We're dealing with a spiritual warfare out here, man. And this is, it's very important. In these last days, man, I can't leave my house without the armor of God. <laughs> no way. In these last days, you can't leave your house without the armor of God because I'm telling you, once you leave your house, I mean, even in some of your own houses, because the Bible does say that a man's enemies will be in his own household. So that's why I require you, uh, all you chosen ones, man. And, and I know not, you know, some of us have parents or like siblings 
who are also walking the path too. And count yourself a blessing. Let me talk about this real quick too. If you ever have a vice, a bad habit that you struggle with, and you have a friend by you, right? And he's supportive of, you know, of you trying to walk, you know, he's supportive. He's not, he's not judging you or criticizing you or belittling you and stuff like that. He's actually happy to see, even though he might be still be doing that, he's, he's happy to see that you're spiritually stronger and he's not jealous or envious. Those, those are the people you want to keep around. Those are your real friends. Those are your real brother or your real sisters. You got to keep those people close. Because a lot of people, whenever you're trying to walk that narrow path, to walk the righteous path, there's going to be people who just get so triggered and bothered by it. And I remember when this was happening to me, I would wonder, why are they so mad? Like, what am I doing to them? But now I understand the spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit in me is bothering their demons. Okay. So you got to always keep that in mind, man. And it's very important to in these last days to not be carnally minded. Don't think things are happening with a carnal mind, okay? And I understand it's very easy to be carnally minded because everything in this world is promotes carnal, okay? It's promoting spiritual death to keep you trapped in the matrix, okay? To keep you trapped in, you know, in, in the flesh. And that's what, it is. that's what they want you to do, okay? You ever, you ever notice if, if there would be more people on this earth that would be filled with the spirit, we wouldn't be seeing all this chaos going on in these last days. Okay, we, won't, we wouldn't be seeing that. Okay, so, you know, the Bible says that a man's enemies will be in his own household. I believe that's in um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. Okay, so it's important to start moving around. Take that, take that leap of faith. When you start to see spiritual warfare taking place in your household nonstop, maybe you try to give a family member or whoever you live with the word or maybe not even you're giving them that. You're just, your spirit is bothering your, their demons, okay? Whenever that is happening, you have to always understand that it's time to move. It's time to get out. A lot of people, they, they, they get comfortable, okay? Some people get comfortable in their sins and they stay lukewarm, okay? They stay double-minded. Guys, in these last days, y'all don't want to move like that. Y'all don't want to move like that. What's up? What's up, uh, JR? What up, bro? Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, it won't let me scroll up. Oh, I see it. I see it now. Mella Rose, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. Someone says, preach, brother in Christ. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you so much, Linda. Esau, he hated their own. There are some he hated. Did the Lord hate Cain? He gave them a mark of protection. Yeah, he did. Thank you, Solo, uh, solo Minded, for the uh, super chat. Yep. Well, the most I had grace for a lot of people who sinned. Okay. We could keep on going with the list of that. David committed adultery. He had grace. Okay. Solomon did what he did. All, you know, um, Noah got drunk. Okay, so we have to also keep this in mind that, yes, we're not perfect beings to where we're, we're going to be without sin. But the thing about us chosen ones, we're striving to be, you know, perfect. Because the Bible does say, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And that doesn't mean that you're going to live a life without sin. It doesn't mean that you're going to be holier than thou. No, it just means that you're, you're striving after God's heart. And that's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about, bro. In these last days, bro, where I'm at in life, that's all I want, man. That's all I want because I understand that anything else is vanity. Everything else is a waste of time, man. The older I get, it's like the older I get, the more wiser I become. And even the Bible says that uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 9 to 11, it's a long verse, but it talks about how your youth is vanity. And I'm no longer in my youth. I'm 30 years old now. So like I start to see that, dang, my 20s and my teenage years, like I was chasing the wrong things, man. And it's easy in this matrix, this world we live in, it's easy to get caught up in the BS. It's easy to get caught up in the chaos and in the sin. Pretty, that's all, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the sin. But let me tell you, man, sin is gonna lead you to death, bro. It's just not, it's just not worth the time, man. It ain't worth the time. And you know, like I said, as a chosen one, we gotta start moving, we gotta start being prepared. Y'all seen the AI technology that's being pushed out. Pretty soon, a lot of y'all are gonna start losing your jobs to the AI. They are dumbing down the human race and smartening the AI technology, the robots. Pretty soon you're gonna have robots drop off Amazon, your Amazon Prime delivery, it's not gonna be human beings no more. The Uber drivers, the, uh, the Lyft drivers, it ain't gonna be humans no more, bro. It's gonna be AI. Okay, and, and after that, after they push that out, you're now gonna have the choice to either take their mark, the chip in your right, in your, uh, right hand or in your forehead, you know, it's pretty much bowing down to Satan, bowing down to the beast. That's what it's all about in these last days. They want you to bow down to him. Okay, so there's only going to be a few people who are set apart. And that's what, it, that's what it means to be holy. It means to be set apart. There's only going to be a few people who are willing to walk that narrow path. And like I said, a lot of people, because remember the Bible does say many are called. And I always talk about this because it's important to know this because everyone calls himself a chosen one. But are you living for the Most High? 
Are you keeping God's commandments? Okay, are you following Christ? Because if you're not, who are you chosen by? Like, it, it, to me, that is, it baffles me how, how people are deceived. Okay, so who are you chosen by? So always keep this in mind. A lot of people get stuck at that calling. It's because they're, they disobedience, okay? Uh, they, they love this world. You know, loving this world is a death sentence, man. Spiritual death. It really is because if you, if you really actually look around, and because the Bible does say in Luke chapter 10, verse 23 to 30, uh, 23, 24, it says, blessed are those who have eyes to see and ears to hear that many prophets and kings and righteous men have desired to see the things that you've seen and they have not seen this, not, not seen them. So when God's giving you eyes to see, he's giving you that discernment. Okay, he's giving the wisdom and knowledge. It's up to you now to minister to other people and inform other people what's really going on in this world because most people, guys, are lost. And you also have to understand this too. When the knowledge is, is bestowed upon you, okay, you don't want the knowledge to puff you up. And also you do not want to cast your pearls on the swine because best believe, you know, when you cast a, your, your pearls on the swine, it's going to backfire on you. It's like a stone getting casted on you. There's many times I did that. I don't do that no more. But, you know, when I was a baby in this walk, there was many times I did that, man. And it was just a death sentence, man. So always keep that in mind, man. And if you are struggling with a sin, if you're struggling with uh, vice, my advice to you guys is just to go cold turkey, just to quit it completely. You know, if there's anybody keeping you in that sin, anyone keeping you in darkness, you have to cut them off. The reason why people don't want to cut them off because people love sin. Okay, people love doing things that pleases to their flesh because best believe when you're on this narrow path, it gets lonely, bro. I'll be lying to, to tell you it's not. Yeah, it gets real lonely. It's like no one wants to be friends with you no more. And that's what that Bible verse says that um, evil is good and good is evil. That's, that's in uh, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. It says, woe to them who call good evil and, uh, and evil good. So it means that pretty much everyone is confused. It seems like everyone, most people are just confused. Okay, they're calling you good people evil and you evil people good. So once you, so you got it's, always keep that in mind, man. Like I always, and it's important too to meditate. A lot of people talk about meditation, doing yoga, and all that new age stupid stuff, right? But you got to make sure you're you're meditating on the word, bro, because that gives you a sense of uh, a sense of peace. Okay, Isaiah chapter twenty six verse three says that God will give you peace because you delight in Him. How many people can say they delight in the Most High? Not many people can say that. Okay. So always keep that in mind. And you being a chosen one, it's time to move different out here. Okay, you're always gonna face prosecution when it's time to level up. You are always gonna face prosecution. We know with the book of Job, okay? We know, we know many stories in the Bible, Joseph, okay? Even, even um, Job, his own wife, his own loved one, okay? Job, his own brother, Cain and Abel, his own brother. Notice how it's always a family member. It's always a friend. It's always the one who's the closest to you. You got those are the ones you gotta watch. Okay, uh, Judas and Jesus. Okay, the one you know, the one that was close. Yeah, someone said Judas. Yep, J Judas and Jesus, the one that was close to you, the one who y'all y'all broke bread with, y'all ate together, maybe y'all started a business together, uh, y'all fellowship together, whatever y'all did, play basketball, you know, listen, to, I don't know, so, stuff like that. It's always gonna be them. And see, one thing about one thing I learned about walking with God is God will show you these people before they backstab you, before they show you those devil horns. God will show you, bro. <laughs> Man, I have testimony after testimony. And when you don't listen to God, when God's telling you to cut off somebody, uh, that toxic girlfriend, toxic boyfriend, or whatever, maybe like a friend that you know who who ain't right, and it's you know, it's okay to not be right because we're all growing, we're all learning. But when someone's just willfully stuck in there and they ain't trying to change, they ain't trying to grow because you are the company you keep. So if you're around someone like that, you're gonna become like them. And that's why God is giving you the wisdom and knowledge to get you to get, to get the heck up out of there, man. Because you're gonna be stuck like them. And God doesn't want you to be stuck. God wants you to be the best version of yourself. God wants you to level up in life. God wants you to be you know, in tune with the spirit so you could you know, change and become the best version of yourself. Okay, that's why I talk about self-improvement. Okay, especially as a, us young men, you know, because there, it seems like the masculine energy, they, they demonize men who have masculine energy. But if you're feminine, a feminine man, you know, you're, you're, you're accepted. It's, it's cool to get, you know, you're cool to them. Because the Jezebel spirit, which is running rampant in America, okay, which talks about this in, many times in the Bible, not just in the Old Testament, the New Testament too, okay? The Jezebel spirit can control those feminine men. And you got to be careful because if you have a corn addiction or if you're just plagued with lust, you got to understand, look, look what happened to Samson, right? Samson, Delilah. The reason why Delilah did what she did is because Samson was, you know, plagued with lust. His lust got the best of him and he, eyes was cut off. He wasn't able to see. So 
and that's why when you look at i was driving on my way over here i drove over here i saw a beer uh, billboards uh half naked woman okay it's like damn this is really the matrix all to keep you in your flesh all and that's how they control you yes that's how they control the masses you know someone says seduce yep seduce yes seducing spirits yep absolutely man and so like i said there's many times in the bible where it made me realize like it was never an enemy it was never the one who 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 was who was letting you know he didn't like you he, he was letting you know he don't rock with you it was the one saying i love you i love you uh bro bae the best friend and see when a snake is biting you the first time it bites you it just nibbles a little bit and this is exactly how these Judases are. This is exactly how these demons and devils are, man. When they first bite on your skin, right? It's just a little nibble. It don't really hurt that much. But when you let that snake bite you again, ooh, it's gonna hurt. I mean, like I said, bro, testimony after testimony. It's time to cut them off, man. It's time to cut them off. A lot of y'all guys, the reason why you don't see no change in your life is because of the people you're around with, bro. And God has let you, like I said earlier, God lets us know. Oh, he lets us know. A lot of people don't listen though, bro. Think about a child, right? When the child, because remember, you know, not, I know not everyone's a child of God, because I know someone's going to say that, because they are children of the devil. It talks about that in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. So yes, I understand that. But, you know, some of us are children of God, right? It's just like a child, right? If the child ain't listening to the mama or the daddy, okay, the, the, uh, the, mama, the, the child ain't listening to the mama and daddy, right? Whatever discipline they try to get, eventually, you know, you know, the, 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 the daddy and mama's, you know, correcting them and, you know, doing a, over and over time and time. Eventually, the mom and dad says, OK, do what you do. And it's the same thing with God. OK, when God is showing you someone's not for you, when God is showing you it's time, it's time to break free from the chains, man, because God gives us the power. Like I said, guys, we don't have to go to a church for to get deliverance. Like I said, I'm not against that because I know some of you religious people might come at me for saying that. You know, hey, if you if you find a church you go to, bro, have fun. You know, learn. You know, seek the knowledge. You know, I'm not, I'm not against that. Okay, but true deliverance, bro. You don't have to go to a church building. God doesn't dwell with temples made with hands. Says the prophet. Okay, it says that two times in the book of Acts. You know, when I got delivered, it wasn't a man, uh, you know, casting a demon. Nah, man, it was just time to repent straight up. We gotta stop being dumb, man. Like, like we gotta stop being dumb. We got to start actually starting to show ourselves approved. A lot of people are just like, you know, brainless sheep out here, man. Sheep and goats, uh, brain dead, pretty much, man. You don't want to be like that, okay? Don't re stop relying on a man to heal you, a man to give you this and that. Man, you got to rely on God, man. If you're relying on a man over God and you wonder why you don't grow, you wonder why you're just stuck being religious, okay? It's all about having a relationship, a relationship. And every time I talk about this, man, there's always people getting offended. But guess what? The truth is offensive. Okay, even the Bible says, Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, that am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. So once you start being a true speaker, these demons, they're going to show themselves. Okay, the, those horns. Oh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna start revealing themselves, man. What, I, what do I do? Someone said, what did I do if I live with family? Uh, I would recommend you to move out. That's what, that's what I would do. You know, I was in that situation. I moved out. Now, I, I was, it took me about, because I was young at the time, so it took me about, about like a year. It took me, and, I, and guys, when I was going through that, when God gave me, you know, the eyes to see and stuff, like I knew some people weren't right. Like I knew some family members weren't right, right. But once God allowed me to see, it's like, dang, some of these people, they're not battling demons. They're devils, bro. They're literally children of Satan. I'm telling you, bro. Like this is, this is deep, man. Some of these people y'all see out here, man, uh, it could be, they could be going to your church, okay? They could be, you know, someone y'all someone y'all hanging out with, you know, some of y'all smoke and drink and stuff like that. The people like that, not saying all of them like that, but you just you just never know, man. That's why you got to be sober and watchful, because a lot of people out here, man. If if you if you're out here walking this street, walking these streets without discernment, it's real bad, man. It's real bad. This world is only getting more darker and more darker. Satan's kingdom is rising. Okay, yes, God's kingdom is rising too, you know, and we all know who wins at the end. But I got to let you all know this too. Satan's kingdom, these last days, they're rising. Many people are forfeiting. They're surrendering their souls, their mind for money, for fame, you know. Some, some people sell their souls, guys, for a one-night stand. Oh, yeah. Yep. Some, it's all vanity. All vanity, man. Some people are pure evil and can completely possessed, but acting like functioning people. Yeah, some people, and also this too, 
I was talking about the truth earlier, right? When you don't love the truth, God's going to give you over to a strong delusion. Okay, and that's what a lot of these people are going through in these last days. Remember I told you how everyone's confused? Because it all correlates to them being under a strong delusion because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they shall be, uh, believe a lie, that all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasures and unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. Okay, everything that, that's going on is all back with the Bible. And you still have people saying that the Bible is not real, God is not real and stuff like that. Those are all fools. The fool says this in his heart, God is not real. All of them. Okay, so, you know, I, I, people always tell me that too. You know, what do I do? I say to move out, start saving up money. Um, it won't happen, you know, it won't happen overnight, obviously. It could take months, you know, or maybe a year or so. But just, you know, when I, when I, I, I was going to say to this too, distract yourself. And what I mean distract yourself by when that's happening, just, you know, do things that's going to keep your mind busy. You know, reading your Bible. When I was going through that type of stuff, I read the whole entire Bible. I think it was in two or three months, the whole entire Bible. You know, and keeping my mind away from, you know, what's going on. And see, yes, I talk about spiritual warfare and some people could get like, kind of like scared or afraid. But listen, brothers and sisters, there's no time to be afraid. There's no time to live in fear because God never gave us a spirit of fear. Okay. God gave us a spirit of love, power, and sound mind. So always keep that in mind. Someone says, don't trust your family on his truth. I mean, it's sad that we have to say this, but that's true, man. We got to expose and cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Praying and meditating on God's word is what I'm doing on a daily as well night. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Someone says, peace and blessings, brother Mark. How do we deny ourselves for Christ? Um, give, up, give up your sins, man. Repent. And, uh, you know. Do what the word says. Keep keep his commandments. It's simple. The Bible the Bible is very simple. It's very very simple. So true. I'm in the process of moving out right now. Keep going, Mark. That's what's up. That's what's up, Sean. Yeah, I, I have to recommend that, man. Like, if you got the right right family members, right friends, stuff like that, then that's cool. So this message is not for everybody. But those who are going through a lot in their household, you gotta move, man. If you look at the Bible, many a times. People move. They weren't stuck in one place. Even Christ says, when you're persecuted in one city, flee to the next. Christ, if you, if you read the Bible for yourself, he was always moving. He was never stuck in one place. He was always going to the city, going there and that. You got to be moving, man. Men today, they say, stay in their house all day. A lot of men today stay in the house all day, play Xbox, play PlayStation. Ain't nothing wrong with playing video games, right? Please use this discretion what I'm saying. Uh, stay in the house all day. Smoke, drink. You know, they ain't really doing nothing. You know, you see more women on their purpose than men today. I'm telling you, everything is backwards, bro. Everything in this in this world, with this matrix is all backward and it's all by design because Satan is the God of this world. Okay, not saying that Satan is the most high, but the Bible does say in 2, Cor uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, it says Satan is the God of this, uh, this world, okay? And yes, the most high God, the God of Israel, he allowed it. He allowed all this. And that's why everyone's confused. That's why this world is given, you know, everyone's given over to a strong delusion. Those who believe not the love of the truth. Okay, everyone who's believing these lies, they're all following Satan, all in darkness. They're in bondage to Satan's kingdom. And yes, I have people tell me this too. If you do struggle with a sin, if you do fall short, listen, that we all do. The Bible says all falling short of the glory of God. But the difference between us chosen ones and the rest of the people, we're fighting this sin, man. We're fighting this flesh. I can't stand my flesh, bro. I can't wait for us to get those new bodies that the Bible talks about. The bodies that are going to be sinless. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for those days. Because every single, every one of us is battling, man. I never act on, I get on here and act like I'm not. Everyone is. But the difference between us and them is that we're fighting this flesh. We're not giving up. We're not giving up the faith, bro. No matter what. We know that Christ in us can overcome anything. And see, and see like I always tell you guys, this is all knowledge to know this. And that's why the Bible says people perish for lack of knowledge. I know that the Bible says that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Romans chapter 8. Okay, I know that. And this is why the word is so powerful. And this is why it says that the word, the sword, you know, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Because whenever you're going through a spiritual warfare, every, even out here right now, I'm in a spiritual warfare. And I have the word to fight back. So I'm not afraid. I don't offer, I don't, I don't move in fear. You know, God has gave us instructions and a lot of people don't follow those instructions. There's even a saying that the Bible means that basic instructions before leaving earth. 
Okay, that's I, I like that. I don't know who came up with that, but I liked it a lot. Okay. Prayer and denying yourself. Yeah, that's, yep, denying yourself. What does denying yourself mean? Like I said earlier, it means that, you know, to give up give up those sins, man. To walk in the spirit. Because it, it, it's hard. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Walk in the spirit. You know, now over time it gets easy. But for the, you know, for those who are new to the truth, new to the faith, in the beginning stages it's hard because it's like you're not accustomed to it. You're programmed to watch corn when you wake up or when you go to sleep. You're programmed to hit the blunt every single day. You're programmed to get drunk. Okay, you're programmed to, you know, just like live for the flesh. So in the beginning stages it's not easier, but as you detach from the matrix, okay, as you start to plug in into this Bible, to this truth, over time it gets easy. It's just like how a baby, right? When a baby's before the baby walks, they gotta crawl. And it's not easy for that baby to crawl. Okay, that they you know, or especially when the baby starts to walk, it falls down many times, starts to cry. That's exactly how it is. Remember, the Bible says that as newborn babes desire the world's the words, sorry, the words, so you may grow. So we gotta be reading this Bible, man. We gotta start feeding ourselves, because that's spiritual food. That's that soul food, that's that real soul food. Because that soul food that us black people be eating, that's causing death at an early age, man. That's calling, that's calling, you know, real talk, man. No treasures, or no, our treasures are not on earth. Yep. Someone says, love you, bro. Thank you for all that you do and for your godly wisdom. You have helped me a lot on my walk with Christ and I found out about SR from you. That's what's up, bro. Yes, a lot of us young men, you know, we got to hop on that semen retention. For those who don't know what that is, it just means abstaining from um, corn, masturbating, and uh, fornication. You know, people say that, Mark, you're talking new age. Those are just religious people who don't know anything, okay? Nothing new age about abstaining from uh, your sexual lust, okay? We got to flee our youthful lust. So anyone who's against that is an agent. And ooh, let's, ooh, it's who? Since we're talking about agents, right? Ooh, let's go, bro, let's go. When you're a chosen one, you got to expect these agents, bro. Oh my goodness, I have so many testimonies. I got so many. And see, what these agents don't know is that God is using them to get you to level up. Look at Ju Judas and Jesus, right? Look at that. If it wasn't for uh, Judas, Christ would have never ascended. Judas had, had to do what he did. Judas had to do what he did. And these agents that come your way trying to destroy you, okay? They have to do what they do too. Remember, God's in control of everything. Once you got that wisdom and knowledge, man, that's why the Bible says uh, wisdom is a tree. Or sorry, um, it says that um, wisdom, yeah, wisdom is a tree of life to him who has it. Yep. Wisdom is a tree of life to him who has it. So you got to understand this, bro. These agents, you should bless them. That's what the Bible says. See, it says, to, it says to pray for your enemies. And see, when a lot of people hear that, pray for your enemies, people be like, oh, hell no, I ain't praying for my enemies. And see, I used to be one of those people, you know, hardening my heart. And see, God has shown me, you know, over time. Because remember, it's all a testament. We're all learning. I'm still learning, every, just like you guys are too. And when you pray for your enemies, okay, when you give them food to eat, water to drink, okay? God will bless you, man. I'm telling y'all. So when these agents try to destroy you, when they come your way, false accusations or, you know, slander, gossip, trolling, whatever the case may be, man, I'm telling you, they're being used for the greater good, but they don't know it. But they don't know it, okay? So always keep that in mind. That's why these people, who come, these agents, I, I pray for them. God bless, I, I'm telling you, God bless them. I wish them the best. And I really mean it because God knows your heart. Because you can say these things, but, you know, God looks at the heart. If you're just saying that because the Bible says it, but you don't really have that love in your heart, you know, that's, that's, that's not right, man. So always keep that in mind, man. These agents, bro, I'm telling you, as a chosen one, you got to expect it, bro. And it, it could be a friend. It could be a family. Okay, it's not just these random people because these agents that came my way, they were the people calling me, bro. Those, those are the people call, telling me, oh, shalom, shalom, ah, shalom, bro. Yeah, yeah. The people you would never expect. Yep. The people in the church, so, you know, the holy people, right? The holier than now, you know, I'm so better than you, you know, the, the puffed up in pride and knowledge. Stay away from those people, man. Stay away. Emma says, I'm working a nine to five as a woman and these agents are W. Yeah, they, these agents are, yeah, the agents in the workplace, man, I used to deal with that too, man. That's, that's the worst. They don't leave you alone. Someone says, the Lord ain't coming back with free. Give them, Father, for they know not. No, check the scriptures. Yeah, I know. Wait, I know that, bro. You don't want to strife. Yes, bless you and all the enemies in the Most High's name. Yep. So let, let, let me let me finish that because I know the Most High, according to Amos chapter nine verse ten, I believe it's Amos chapter nine, says that the Most High he's sending his son to destroy all the ungodly, all the sinners. Okay. 
He's, he's coming back to destroy them. So yes, okay? I know that Christ and God ha has their enemies, just like us children of God have enemies too. And a lot of these enemies, we don't even know they're our enemies because we're not even paying attention to them. They're down here. Uh, since we're walking with God through our obedience, we're continuing to rise. And they're just like that crab in a bucket who just wants to continue pulling you back down. Because that's what Satan wants to do. Satan doesn't want you to see you happy. He doesn't want you to see you grow. He doesn't want you to start a family. He wants you to, you know, be trans, you know. Oh, let me not, let me not trigger nothing. You know how this world is, these platforms. <laughs> so let me not, y'all know what I'm trying to say, the LG. Okay, the LG. <laughs> y'all know what I'm trying to say, man. Okay, so he don't want you to grow. He don't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to be fruitful. No, 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 man. He wants you to go to the lake of fire. He wants you to burn, bro. <laughs> he wants you to burn because he's going to burn. You know, it's like, it's like that jealous, envious person who they see you winning and they could salute you. They, they could give you, you know, props. They could show love, but they don't want to do that because their hate is in the heart. They got no love in their heart and you don't want to be moving like that, man. You don't want to be moving like that. Shalom, Ak, Mark, peace and blessings. What's up? Shalom to you too, uh, Nina. Keep fighting the good fight. The devil's time is short. I wasn't be ugh, hard to imagine. I was blind back like then. I said that, bro. That not everyone's a child of God. Even though I said that, there's still people saying that. Love you, Mark. <laughs> Jesus loves y'all. Thank you, bro. Love you too, man. I'm fighting for my life. It's always a battle in my mind with evil. I have faith that God will use my testimony to glorify his son, Jesus Christ. Yep, yep, yep. All the stuff I went through, guys, it was all a testimony. It was all it was all just a testimony, man. Thank you so much, A.O. Fresh, for the super chat. And uh, I will make a video on that pretty soon. I'm not sure when. Not sure when, but i um, definitely going to make a video on that pretty soon. He's coming back with a big two-edged sword. They are waiting until you turn around. They stick that knife in your back spiritually. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah. If only some of us could see into the spiritual realm, man. Please pray for me and my marriage. God bless. All right, Lee, I got you. Yeah, see, speaking of marriage, speaking of marriage, man, or just people, not just marriage either, but people who are like, you know, try, you know striving for marriage or say you're in a relationship, you want to, you know, you do the right thing, get married, start a family, right? You got to understand the devil does not like that, man. So you got to expect, remember the Bible does say this though, it's a time of love, a time for peace, and a time for war, okay, and a time for hate. That's in Ecclesiastes chapter three. So when you're in that time of war, and this is, like I said, all wisdom, all wisdom. When you're in that time of war, you could expect, you know, all hell to break loose in your marriage. Or, you know, that's like I said, for those who are striving to get married, you're in a relationship or whatever, right? You could expect that. The devil doesn't want you all two to come together in Christ and, you know, uh, this, make, you know, the man's making sure that he's leading, you know, doing his thing. You know, he's, he's submitted under the Christ. And see, this is how it works, right? It goes God, Christ, the man, and the woman. The problem is that there's no longer the man because they, they, this world has told you that the man ain't ish, you know, there's no need for a man, right? So you remove the man. You know, now things are out of order and now you're allowing Satan into your relationship. You're allowing Satan in that marriage. When you feel like you don't need a man in your marriage or your relationship, I'm telling you, you don't want to think like that. Okay. It's not wise. And the Bible even says that the foolish woman, she tears um, things down. She tears down with her, with her own hands. So you want to be wise. You don't want to be a, a fool out here. Okay. So always keep that in mind. It's always going to be a war. It's always a season for that. All seasonal. Okay, just you gotta make sure you pass that season, man, because there's many times that that season of war, you know, the devil, he, he tries to cause division. He wants you to, you know, separate yourself. He doesn't want to see the children have, the child have a man in, the, in their life or a woman in their life. You know, the mom and the dad, both are needed, okay? The devil don't want that. So always keep it in mind, we gotta put our ego to the side because a lot of people are, you know, too much ego. And that could cause that could cause all hell to open, the gates of hell to open too with your ego. Okay. If you're not ready to, you know, live your life for the Lord, bro, I wouldn't recommend getting married. Just straight up. You know, for, or, or let's say you want to live your life for the Lord, but that person you're with is not really a, kind of like lukewarm. You gotta be careful because he don't want to be unequally yoked. Because that could cause your life unnecessary problems. That could have all been avoided. So please don't be unequally yoked out here. Especially as a chosen one, we gotta move different. If you can't find that spouse that you've been looking for for years, you just got to wait and be patient. 
Okay, you gotta wait and be patient. It's all God's timing. You know, even the Bible says that patience, long suffering, is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Or sorry, 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 my fault. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, my fault. Not the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And you know, that's something that I struggle with too, but, you know, patience. But you gotta be patient, man. It's all God's timing. Keep that in your back of your mind. It's always God, God, God's timing. Someone said, don't get married if you're acting like a three or four. Oh yeah, definitely not. A, a three or four has a lot of soul ties with demons and devils. So if she gets she had to get in a relationship with a man of God, oh, all oh, hell breaks gonna break loose. So yes, y'all don't wanna be doing that. <laughs> y'all definitely don't wanna be doing that, man. Uh, someone says, yes, not all marriages were put together by God. Some people just get married for the title. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Someone says, good morning. I know you, you be up this early. Well, I'm in California, so I'm, it's pretty early where I'm at. Uh, for it is written, it's better to, for the man to stay on the rooftop than to be in a house with a quarrelsome woman. Yeah, yeah, that's the Bible verse right there. Yep. Um, thank you so much, Gavin uh, Turner, for the super chat. It says thanks for what you do. Be encouraged, and may the Most High continue to bless you and keep me in your prayers. All right, bro, I got you, Gavin. I got you, bro. Excuse me. Someone says if the man and woman submit to each other in love, then the devil can disrupt them. Um, if the man submits to Christ as Christ is submitted to, to God and the woman is submitted to the, um, to the man as a man is submitted to Christ, then that's where the devil can't disrupt you. Okay, so that's, it's not just love. Yeah, yes, love is important. Love is, you know, I understand that. But make sure you're, you know, submit, you have that in the back of your mind because a lot of people say they love God and stuff like that. But are you following the Bible? Are you following what the word says? Because if you're not, how can you say you love God? Okay, love is an action. It's an action. I know a lot of people say, oh, I love you, I love you, but the action's got to back up for it. A lot of people say, oh, Mark, I love you, but they have, have they hit the like button, which is free to do. Okay, it's all actions. Okay, so don't say you love me if the actions don't back up. Even Christ said himself that if you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say if you love me, go to the church. He didn't say if you love me, uh, pray, just pray and say, I love you, Jesus, you know, or I love you, Christ. Okay, he said, if you love me, you keep my commandments, because that's action. It's action, man. We got to be action oriented in these last days. Okay, if you love me, keep my commandments. Simple as that. Agents keep coming my way. Pray for me. Yeah, like I said about these agents, right? Never, never be discouraged. Okay, like I say, guys, agents that come your way when you're when you when you belong to. Let me make this very clear. When you belong to God, when you belong to Christ, when agents come your way. They're just being used for their greater good. I'm letting you all know some real stuff, man. They're just being used for their greater good. They're just being used for their greater good. Even look at the movie The Matrix, right? When he was dealing with agents. Look what he Neo always made it to the top. He always won. You know? And that's the same. And Neo being a chosen one, you being you being chosen, it's the same thing. So don't even don't even worry about the agents. Yes, I, I let people know to inform them about the spiritual warfare and how these devils, you know, who come as a, as a friend, come your way, you know. So discourse, you know, try to discourage you or try to get you to go back to your sins. You know, something that God has delivered you, delivered you from. Okay. And you got to also, also keep in mind, this is such a spiritual warfare, right? Whenever you give up a sin, you have to expect someone the devil is using. Okay. They might not even know they're being, let me, keep, let me let y'all know something too. Some people don't even know that they're being used. A lot, a lot of people don't. Now, some people do. Some people are doing the will of Satan. So they know, they know what they're doing. Okay. But the people who don't, when you give up a sin, and Satan sees you trying to walk that path, trying to do, you know, do what's righteous, do what's, do what's good, right? He's going to use someone to, to get you to go back to that sin that God has delivered you from. He's going to use someone to get you to go back to, to your vomit, okay? So always keep that in mind, man. Always keep that in mind. Always keep that in mind. These agents are just being used for the greater good, man. So like I said, your enemies, pray for them, for they know not what they do. Because you got to think about it, right? With Christ... When they, when, when they were nailing, nailing him to the tree, okay? He could, he could have sent angels to destroy them all. He could have sent angels to, angels to destroy them all. But he said, Father, forgive them for, for they know not what they do. So these agents, they don't even know. These people who got demons on them, they don't even know. They don't even know, man. But some people do know. Like I said, some people are doing the will of Satan. Yes, they know. Okay, they know. And just how God rewards you for your obedience, okay, Satan rewards, you know, the people who serve him for their for their you know obedience to him, yes. Satan is a, is a copycat. Everything that the Bible says that God says. Because remember, Satan wants to be like God too. 
Satan wants to be like the Most High. That's why he fell, and pride comes before the fall. So if Satan wants to be like the Most High, he's going to copy him. The things that the Bible says to do, he does the opposite. There's the opposite. He causes confusion. Okay, so always keep that in mind too, man. Uh, for it is written, it's with the spirit and not the flesh we are up against. Yep. What time is it there? Uh, I think it's like 3 in the morning right now. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like 3 or something like that. Someone says, I'm in Australia and we are under a heavy attack from the enemy. It's turned into a weird, twisted episode of South Park in real time. Wow, man. Yeah, I feel like sometimes when I walk out of my house, it could feel like the Truman Show. If you got, if you all seen that movie. Sometimes it could, it could feel like the Truman Show out here, man. Where it's like, wow, this is really a program we're living in, man. This is really a simulation where everything is just programmed. It really do be feeling like that sometimes, man. For real, for real. Someone says, yes, I want to keep the commandments of God for I love him. I don't want to be lukewarm. That's what's up. You talked about dreams, Mark. Enemy loves to attack when one's sleeping. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that. I'd be talking about that uh, in, my, in my videos that I make about the signs, how the devil does attack people in their dreams, too. Yep. You know, if y'all having sex in a, in a dream, that's not of God, man. That's a succubus. That's an incubus. That is a demon. Yes, that's a demonic attack. A lot of people, when they, when they get those dreams, they, 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 you know, they like that. They want more of that. They don't even understand that. It's just demons, man. It's just demons, bro. Or like, let's say if you have a dream, right? Where someone's trying to take you out. Someone's trying to take you out in your dreams. And they fail to do that. No weapon formed you against shall prosper. What's taking place in your dreams in the spiritual realm will manifest in reality. Okay, so there's, there's someone in the spiritual realm with, that's assigned by saying they try to take you out. I, I love dreaming. I love dreaming because I understand the messages behind it. I love dreaming, bro. I love it. I love it. I understand the messages behind the dreams. And a lot of people are not in tune to understand that. Okay, so, and I even, I remember I asked God for this to, you know, uh, Joseph, he had the dreams to discern, um, you know, to, the, the, meet, the reasons and meanings behind the dreams. And I feel like ever since I asked God for that, like, I understand, what, you know, some of my dreams. Even when, you know, people tell me about their dreams, I'm, I'm easily able to discern it. Like, okay, that's what that dream meant. Okay, I remember there's a time where a demon tried to kill me in my dream. And then a couple of days later, someone tried to kill me in, you know, in real life. Yeah, but they, they, of course they failed. You know, no weapon foreign will prosper. So I was good. But God warned me through that dream. Many times, man. Many, so I'm glad you said that. Thank you for saying that, bro. Yes, God, you know, God definitely speaks in your dreams. And yes, the devil could attack you in your dreams too. Remember, the dreams is a spiritual realm. That's what it is, man. Thank you so much, Nita, for the super chat. It says, thank you so much for your labor in Christ. It has helped me tremendously. May the most high bless you and keep you and yours. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Love from India, Mark. God bless us all. That's what's up. Shout out to India. Shout out to India. The succubus. Someone says the succubus is always in their dreams. Dang. Hey, man, if that's you, bro, if the succubus is always in your dreams, man, I will start fasting and praying that off, man. Or maybe it could be a soul tie you got. Or maybe it could be the corn you're watching. So, um, that's not something, if, if, man, if that happened to me, bro, I would be fighting the spirit. I mean, I'm telling you guys, we got to be warriors out here, bro. It ain't no, we ain't no time for games, man. No time for games. We got to start fighting against all principalities, all spiritual awakeness in high places. We got to get deep in the word, man, and start fighting these demons off, bro. Because best believe, if you keep having that second best dream, like over and over again, that could be a demon you're battling, man. Straight up. Straight up. Now, I know the second best could attack us here and there, but if you're always having dreams, that could be a demon, man, attached to you. Like I said, how do you get these demons to leave you alone, to get, get, a guy, get out of you? Number one is your obedience. What doors are you opening? Okay, because the succubus can't just always attack you for no reason. You got to be opening a certain door. And if you don't know what that door is, you know, you should ask the most high. Okay, remember, it's all about obedience, bro. That's what it all correlates to your obedience, man. Because through your obedience, you're going to know this. You're going to know this. It's a spirit spouse. Six demons are spouses. You have to divorce them and burn the rings. Yeah, that's true. Spiritual spouses, yep. Someone says spiritual, uh, sorry, semen retention for 41 days. I've been attacked by a succubus. I've lost in the spiritual battle. Stand up and again and fight. Yes, keep fighting, bro. If y'all lose a battle, keep fighting, bro. We don't win all battles. We don't. But keep on fighting, bro. Keep on fighting. That's why, like I said, that's what separates the chosen ones from the rest of the people of the world because we're fighting. We're not giving, that's what the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. 
So when you're fighting the good fight in faith, that means you're fighting against the spiritual wickedness in high places. You're fighting against these demons and devils, bro, in the spirit. Okay, remember, because our weapons are about warfare, or it's not carnal. So it's all spiritual, you know? Yep, Tazimah, put the armor on. Yep, daily. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Someone says, I appreciate you. Nice to hear like-minded that is the same and knows that God before us who dares. Thank you so much, Cosmic. Someone says, ask and ask God to break covenants with people and things attached to our sin. Yeah, uh, yep. And like I said, guys, prayer is, is powerful too. Because if you don't know something, if you're, if you're confused or if you don't have the knowledge, you should ask God. That's why it's so important to have a relationship with the Most High, man. Ask him, ask the Father, show me, show me what I'm doing wrong. Show me what doors I'm opening. Show me who I got to cut off. You know, if you want me to move, please, please provide the tools to get me to move. Because remember, money is just a tool. It's just a tool. It's unfortunate that you have people out here selling their soul for the money, selling their soul for the clout. Okay, money is just a tool. So, and yes, God will give you money if you need, you know, if you need money to move out, because it, it's just a tool. The problem is people are in love with it. Someone says you have to fast and pray to break corn hold off you. Yeah, man. So, and it could be a stronghold too. Yep. It could be a demonic stronghold too. Like I said, guys, we gotta start fighting, bro. We gotta start becoming warriors, warriors of Christ. Someone says, why am I, someone says, why? <laughs> Why are you covered in purple? Come on, man. There's an LED light on top of me. This is, I'm out in downtown right now. I didn't, I didn't put the light here. I didn't put the purple light here. Back then, it was a regular light. But um, <laughs> why am I covered in purple, man? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, put on the spiritual chastity belt with Legion chapter 6. Yep. Someone says, what do you have to say about or what do you do with warring against anger? Um, anger is not good if it's uncontrollable. If it's uncontrollable, if it's raging anger, that's something that we used to struggle with too. Um, the, even the Bible says that, you know, you could open a door through that too. A door for Satan to come in too. So, um, you know, just be calm. Like I said, when you, when you abide in the spirit, you're not going to want to do that, bro. You're not, because it's all carnal, gain all rage and all. I, remember, I, I used to do that. I used to be that type of dude. I'm not, that's just makes me, keeps me low. So I don't do that no more. It's just energy draining. So once you know that, you're not going to want to be angry. Once you're in tune with the spirit, you're not going to want to be angry and rage out. Now, I don't understand that there is righteous anger. So, you know, like I said, everything I say uses discretion. But when you're always raging and lashing out, that could be also feminine energy too, man. You don't want to be, as a man, you don't want to be operating like that. So God has shown me that too. He's correcting me. And through everything that God has shown me, I teach you guys. I show you guys, you know, so you can learn from my mistakes too. Because I used to always try, always raging out. Man, what a joke, man. I can't believe I used to be like that. And see, when you look back in life, you know, when you look back when you first started walking this narrow path, you start to laugh because it's like, wow, I, I really grew. And it's all through Christ, Christ in you. Okay, remember the Bible says he must increase and you must decrease. What does that mean? Christ in you must increase and, you know, you must decrease as in, you know, the vanity stuff. Which is, it seems like a lot of people in these last days are plagued with. It's not about yourself no more. It ain't about yourself, man. It's about, you know, the body, the body of Christ and doing the will of the Father. It's no longer about you. It's no longer about how many selfies you're taking, how many likes you get on a picture, you know, how many views you get. It don't, that don't mean nothing, bro. If it ain't linked to the kingdom of God, I, it's, what's the point? And Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, to seek God's kingdom and, you know, all things shall be added unto you. So that's something that a lot of people got to start meditating on too, seeking God's kingdom. And that verse transformed my life because God wants, to, wants you to transform. He wants you to transform through the word. Okay, so make sure, making sure you're applying it to your life because we know what James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25 says, you know, those who are hearers and not doers. Okay, uh, Tazmach said, one, uh, John chapter 4, verse 6 says, we are of God. He that knoweth God, hear us. He that is not of God, hear us not. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Yep, preach, bro. That's facts. That's going to be one of my favorite Bible verses too. Yep, let me, let me reread this, man, because y'all got to hear this. It says, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 6 says, we are of God. He that knoweth God, hear us, and he that is not of God, hear us not. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So whenever you start preaching righteousness to someone, or, you know, you try to uplift them through the word and they don't hear you, because, you know, it's the spirit of error. The spirit of error, man. Real talk. Your looks and your body, and your, wait, your looks and your beauty in vain don't mean anything. Exactly. The Bible even says in uh, Proverbs chapter 31 that, uh, Beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. All the makeup you put on, all the eyelashes, all the extra stuff, it's all the tattoos and stuff, all vanity. All vanity, man. 
And I'm so glad that I never fell into all that stuff. I'm so glad I never fell into all that stuff. Mark, I, I tell God when I pray to watch over you and thank you for helping others. You're not forgotten. Thank you so much. I love when people say, Mark, I'm praying for you and stuff like that, or I pray for you. Because we all need prayer. I'll never be like, oh, I don't need it. Like, that's crazy. But yes, thank you so much, God. And that's true love. When people say, oh, Mark, I love you and they're praying for me, that's actions behind it. It's actions. So I appreciate y'all, you know, not just the people who, you know, super chat and stuff like that, which is appreciated, but also those who are praying for me. You even had someone tell me they fasted for me, which is love, bro. That's love, man. That's true love. So I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all keep me going. If it wasn't for you, I want to be on here. I want to be on here, man. So the people who support, the people who really have genuine love for me, or just people who watch me, even the people who watch me, they don't show no love, even you, because at the end of the day, it's still, you know, you're still watching. You're still getting edified. You're still getting spiritually fed, regardless if you like me or not. So you made it this far too. So clearly you're learning something. I stopped for six months watching corn, then got hit by Satan, but I'm still going to fight back with the word of God. That's what's up, man. Yeah, someone says surround yourself with like-minded people. Yep, facts, man, facts, facts. Someone says, seriously, what is this cash at? <laughs> Thank you, man. Love, peace, and blessings from Philly, brother. Shalom. Thank you, bro. Shalom to you, too. Had demons chase me in my dreams. What should I do? Um, when, it, when that happens, that means that the devil is looking to still kill and destroy you. There's a, there's a heavy spiritual warfare in your life. So what you should start doing is start praying and fasting and start rebuking that. I will start praying and fasting straight up. And, and also look around the people you surround yourself with, too. Who are the people who surround yourself? What doors are you opening? You got to always examine. That's what the Bible says, to examine yourself daily. You gotta always be like, looking from within, taking, a, being accountable, and I feel like a lot of people struggle with that, you know, I, you know, lacking accountability. So be accountable. If you made a mistake, if you if you open a door, be accountable to it. Okay, let me repent. Okay, because like I said, we all fall short. Let, so let me repent, you know, and let's not abuse grace, because a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are abusing grace. We don't want to do that. Okay, we don't want to abuse the spirit of grace. Someone says, these women are embodied with the Jezebel spirit. Yeah, most people are. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yep. Yep. Someone says, I'm doing a lot of blocking adult websites on everything that is electronic that has a, that has a search bar. I'm going to do this with all the faith I have to fight the sin. That's what's up, man. Yeah, keep fighting, bro. That's what we got to keep on doing, man. Keep fighting the enemy. Keep fighting our flesh. Because we could talk about the devil this, agents that, demons this, man. But at the end of the day, our, our biggest enemy is our flesh. Our flesh is what gets us into trouble. Most of the time, not all the time, of course. But most of the time, it's our flesh that gets us in, into trouble. Okay? So being accountable, man. And I love each and one of you guys. Uh, it's about almost, I think it's like 3 or 4 a.m. over here, man. So I got I to gotta head on out. I'm going to start doing this once a week like back in the days. Uh, no security guard came. No security guard came, so I'm surprised about that. But, man, I love you guys so much, man. Y'all who got edified, uh, this video will be on my main channel uh, on Monday, most likely on Monday or some, sometime soon. So thank you all who sent super chats. Thank you all who show love, who like the video, subscribe to the channel. Y'all keep going, man. Uh, just keep on fighting, man. That's the message of this video, man. All you chosen ones, keep on fighting. Keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, you know, be aware of agents and devils and demons, you know, and, you know, also fighting against that flesh because we could blame all, we could blame everybody. Right. But at the end of the day, what are you doing? Are you walking the spirit? Or are you walk? Or are you walking the flesh? So y'all stay safe. Y'all stay prayed up. Love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.